So now we'll be looking into the primitive roots of discrete logarithm. The purpose of using or looking for the primitive root of this logarithm is actually to improve the security where the answers computed from it should be always unique. As you can see, a unique exponent which is also the primitive root will produce distinct answers after we move the number with p. We will have an example after this. Alright, so given this formula, I believe you, you are friendly with this because my friend has presented to you. So we can see that primitive roots, they actually mean no matter what power it gives, for example here, a power to 1, a power to 2, up to a power minus 1, if they produce distinct outputs or values, we can conclude that it is the unique exponent and also a is actually the primitive root of prime p. So guys, let us take a look of an example here. So now we'll be taking an example of a power to the i mod a number where we will use 7 here which is also a prime number uh, to produce some answers for us to compare to see which of them are actually the primitive roots. Alright, so we will compute them as a table as you can see over here a power to the uh, sorry, a power to 1 and we will create some numbers here up to 7 because it's not 7, right? So 6. And now we are going to increase the power to a power 2, a to the power of 3, and so on. a to the power of 5, a to the power of 6. And of course, you can have more over here. But I will explain later uh, what actually is this, right? So now, as we can see that a power to uh, a power to one, and over here there are some numbers here, and after the most seven, you will exactly get the same answers of right, like uh, like over here. So there is no there is nothing wrong here. So we proceed to the a power two, where after for every power for number one, no matter how how big the power is. The answer is always 1. So for, for each answer, which means it's 1, after we mode 7, it should be 1 as well, right? So, nothing wrong over here. So we proceed to the number 2. So for example, over here, 2 to the power of 2 is 4. So for mode 7, we will know that it's actually 4. Alright? So, proceed to number 3. And we can see that it's actually 2 power of 3 is 8. So 8 mod 7 is 1. And 2 power of 4 is 16. And 16 mod 7 is actually 2. And we just proceed to do until the end of the table. I mean to complete the table. Alright, so I forgot my answer. So I'll just write all the answers over here. For sake of time. Alright, so we've got the table over here, so let's differentiate them a little bit. Okay. So, from all the answers here, since what we mentioned just now, the answers should be unique, right? The answers should be unique where a to the power of 1, a to the power of 2, until a to the power of p minus 1 should always be different. If you still remember the, remember the condition. So we will now check which of the answers here, they are actually different. So we will call that the primitive roots of a with, uh, to, the prime, uh, to the prime of 7. So we will check one by one to see which answers are primitive root. So this definitely not. And one more condition is that 
there should no uh, repeating numbers uh, computed from the row over here so for example 241 241 so this is actually repeating the, the first answer over here so we cannot take this as our primitive root so for number 3 8, uh, 8 to the power of 1 until 8 to the power of 6 as we can see all the outputs or the, or the values computed they are different so in this case we can conclude that they are actually the primitive root we are looking for so and of course the primitive roots can be more than one so we will see the the next three compute, computed values to see whether they are primitive roots. So for number four, yeah, they are repeated, so it's not. Number five, okay, so yes, number five is it is a primitive root for this example. And obviously number six, it is not, so we can take it up. So over here we can conclude them that. Um, Number 3, value 3 and 5, they are the primitive root we are looking for in this example. And of course after this, no matter which power you use, uh, which means you increase the power to 7, 8, 9 and 10, you will see the pattern uh, will be always repeating. right? And that's what we mean by the cyclic group uh, in the previous topic my friends have told you right all right guys so over here we have another example where we actually use the modular 19 as you can see over here and uh, we do as what we did just now computing all the values and we will get different answers over here and actually you can see for number 2 3 10 13 uh, 14 and 15 they are the primitive roots respectively for this modular 19 alright so for a bigger number you can have a more difficult computation of the values so it can be even more secure alright 